Welcome back to First Move. ChatGPT, OpenAI's text-generating chatbot, has taken the world and classrooms by storm. With its ability to write essays, code, and take exams, it's no wonder that authorities around the world are grappling with whether it's better to use it or ban it. But what if you provide online education, like our next guest? Bangalore-based education company Baiju's came became India's most valuable startup in 2021 as demand for online classes surged. Its flagship product, Baiju's, the learning app, has more than 100 million registered students. Well, last week it launched three new AI models, Badri, Math, Chat, Math GPT, and Teacher GPT. Badri detects potential learning difficulties, Math GPT solves math problems, and Teacher GPT serves as an assistant giving students personal guidance. At a time when lots of schools are banning Chat GPT, Baiju says its tools help transform the learning experience, not take it away. Now joining us is Divya Gopalnath. She is the co-founder of Baiju's and she joins us now. That was a lot of dashes and acronyms, so I apologize for stumbling around a little bit there. Um, welcome to the show. <laughs> welcome to the show. Um, for our viewers that might Thank not you. remember our conversations or, or what your platform offers, just in your own words, what the platform is, who uses it and what you offer. Yes, so today we are proud to serve 150 million students and working professionals across the world. Uh, from apps and uh, services and classrooms. So we've been able to help students learn better, fall in love with learning. So we serve students from ages four all the way to 40 and beyond, from early school, preschool, all the way up to upskilling and test prep. We are core educators. Uh, we've launched our company in 2011. And uh, all along the way, we've used technology to positively disrupt everything that we do, uh, to move from thousands to millions, to ensure that learning is personalized, engaging, and effective. OK. And then we had the pandemic and the wave of people going from sometimes using online education to supplement what they do to suddenly that being the primary for, for many people around the world. How did that impact the number of people that both use the platform, but also subscribe to the platform? Because those are different numbers. Yes, so just to put it in terms of numbers, prior to the pandemic, we had 50 million students on our various platforms, but post pandemic, during and post, we've added 100 million more. So today we have 150 million students and working professionals on our various platforms. What the pandemic did was that it showed how online learning could be an integral part of mainstream learning, but it also showed that the future of learning is not necessarily completely online. It's actually a blend of offline and online learning. The hybrid model is something that we've also experimented, scaled uh, in in India, where we've launched 300 hybrid learning centers over the last one year. Yeah, incredible. So let's talk about the um, artificial intelligence impact of what you're doing, because as we've said, you're digital, you can't escape this. The, the hope is that you can enhance the product that you're offering. Just explain how the user experience is going to evolve and is already with what you've announced and are adopting. Yes, so with Baiju's Wiz, which is the suite of AI um, transformer models, two of which are powered by GPT-4 does, is that we've seamlessly blended the brilliance of artificial intelligence with the guiding touch of experienced educators. So our dedicated team of passionate technologists and AI researchers, they've tirelessly trained these models on the billions of touch points of our vast and diverse student base. So we meticulously aligned every aspect of our content with established curricula, ensuring I would say a perfect harmony between our AI models and the existing educational framework. So over the past one and a half years, we've trained you know, various large language models like GPT-4. And what sets Baiju's Wiz apart now is its unrivaled hyper-personalization, which means that every student who uses our various platforms would learn in, in, a, in a way which is suited to them as per their style, as per their size, as per their pace of learning. Mm. Our eagle-eared viewers will recognize, because I talk about this a lot on the show, the difference between chat GPT 3.5 and, and chat GPT 4 in terms of accuracy and a reduction in some of the crazy hallucinations is vast. So it's interesting to hear you talk about chat GPT 4, which I think is crucial. You talk about an accuracy rate of, of 90 percent, and you also mentioned the word training. How many people trained the data that's going into the, the models that you're using? Because the training is key, and that's lots and lots of people. I guess I'm getting to the cost of all this, Divya. How have you achieved this? 
So I would say more than the people, we've also used the right tools. So just to be clear, it's not the large language model that does math. It's the Baidu's tools that do math, like companies like GeoGebra, which we had acquired. So if I had to put a cost to this over the last one and a half years, it would be close to $100 million, including the acquisitions that we've made that has gone into training these models to ensure a very high accuracy. So close to 90% is a, is a very, very good accuracy to ensure that uh, the students are going on a hyper-personalized journey as per their style. I mean, that's a huge investment in artificial intelligence. Are, are you profitable? I know it's difficult in your, you're still in growth mode, you're investing like crazy into things like artificial intelligence. Are, are you profitable as a business? We have multiple, I would say, uh, streams running under Baiju's. So we have the apps, uh, the Baiju's learning app, which is profitable, but the investments are heavy in the future, which is like AI. The investments are heavy in our hybrid mode of learning, which is Baiju's tuition center. And we also have sub subsidiaries in India like Akash Baiju's, which are already doing well and cash flow positive. So it is a mix, uh, I would say, but wherever we've launched the product some time ago, all of those are positive, uh, profitable, but then there are investments being made in future products, which we hope to be profitable very soon. <laughs> You're working on it. Um, can you imagine a situation yep. where this replaces teachers? And do you understand why some school districts, whether it's in the United States or countries around the world, are saying, okay, we have to ban this. It's effectively cheating. We can't control it. Is that a mistake in your mind? And can it be better controlled and quite quickly? On the question of tech and teachers, for me, it's never been tech versus teachers. It's always been tech and teachers. And for this, I speak as a teacher myself. When I started at the age of 21, I know that if I had a tool which would help me, give me feedback, categorical feedback on how I could improve, I would be a much better teacher, much faster. So what all our AI models do is that they not just enable students, they also enable teachers. These kind of tools in the hands of the teacher can help them teach better, can help them give feedback in such a beautiful way that they would be able to help a child understand exactly how they can do better. So if anything, it's making them stronger. And just to put it in terms of numbers, over the last one and a half years, we've employed 25,000 teachers, most of them women, teaching from home to the rest of the world. So if anything, tech has actually enabled teachers. See, what you say of technology, the opposite is also true. And I'm a strong believer that as long as you control tech and it doesn't control you, it's fine. I love that. It's not tech versus teachers, it's tech and teachers. We need you perhaps to um, send a message. Would you agree though, very quickly, it's, it's different doing this digitally to being in person in a classroom and being able to control this in some way. Do you accept that difference or you say no? You can say no. I see that, <laughs> I see that it's best used in a blended format. I yeah. would say that uh, learning is a blended experience. Learning is a holistic experience. You need the, the, the touch of a teacher, either physically or virtually, helping a child, mentoring a child. And then you need technology to aid them, which could be either online or offline. I come from a world where we started in a completely offline model. And then we moved completely online. Today, we have even hybrid products. So we've seen it all. And we've seen the benefits of all. So I would say there is a child who deserves to learn in a style that suits them the best. Some children would prefer complete online learning. Some would need the offline touch of a teacher. And some would thrive in the hybrid format. We should let them take the call and put them in the driver's seat. Oh, my goodness. I have loads more questions for you. You're going to have to come back soon. And we'll talk more about the business itself. But for now, great to chat to you. Thank you. Um, the co-founder there of Baijus, Divya, great to chat. Thank you. More first move after this.